there's been a revolution in, in cancer genomics and genomic research over the past decade, both with the plummeting costs of DNA sequencing and also the development of new technologies that allow us to be able to, to do things with uh, DNA sequencing and other genomic uh, analysis that we couldn't do before. I think the ultimate goal is for every cancer patient to do genomic analysis of their tumor, understand the molecular underpinnings of their particular tumor, be able to predict the optimal therapies, and be also be able to predict and preempt resistance to those therapies. And with large projects like TCGA and the other genomics research that's been done, we've made a lot of progress, but we still have a lot more progress to make. And I think one of the ways we're going to do this is by amassing uh, and studying many, many more thousands of tumors. And not just any tumors, but tumors that have been clinically annotated. We have the potential, I think, to, to study hundreds of thousands of tumors, and that will really get us to the understanding that we need to really implement precision medicine well. Genomic sequencing research has really enabled us to understand more and more dependencies in tumors. And that, coupled with the growing repertoire of targeted therapies that are in development, we've really now been able to use genomics in clinical research to understand what are the molecular features of a tumor that may predict response to some therapies uh, or predict resistance to other therapies. And this has really led to an era where we're starting to do uh, more precision medicine, where we can do genomic sequencing uh, in a clinical research setting and use that to influence, influence treatment decisions, but also to understand likelihood of response to therapies, likelihood of resistance to therapies, prognosis, and, and diagnosis. Right now, um, using genomic technologies, we're able to identify alterations in the tumors that might specify the optimal use of certain therapies. And those might be FDA-approved therapies or those might be clinical trials. So for example, we studied a patient who has lung cancer and he has advanced lung cancer and received standard of care testing uh, which didn't reveal any of the normal molecular alterations that one might use to choose a targeted therapy. Uh, and so he enrolled in, in our research study and we did whole exome sequencing on his tumor. And the whole exome sequencing revealed three different alterations that were otherwise not detected by standard approaches. His physician used this information uh, to choose a clinical trial. He enrolled on the clinical trial and the first clinical trial he enrolled on um, he had, uh, it wasn't a home run, but it was the best response that he had had to date on, on any therapy. When that clinical trial stopped, the patient went back to the same sequencing data that we generated from his tumor, and the physician chose a different clinical trial, and that clinical trial has continued to work well for this patient. And that's an example where the genomics that were generated in the research setting uh, were able to specify uh, two therapies that otherwise might not have been used in that patient. Trials like lung map are the clear next step in the paradigm shift of clinical trials where we're now using detailed genomic information to help inform clinical decision making. And done in the context of a clinical trial makes a lot of sense because we can establish the rules and understand how we link uh, specific genomic alterations to clinical decisions in a way that's controlled and well studied. I think we're going to need uh, additional models of how to do genomically driven clinical trials, including basket trials where we are looking at specific mutations across multiple tumor types. I think there are, uh, there are going to be really rare mutations that we see in this long tail of alterations as we do more and more sequencing, and we're going to have to be agile in our way of developing clinical trials to link um, particular therapies with rare mutations, but I think lung map is a great start. As we've sequenced more and more thousands of tumors, we've learned that there are a number of genes that are recurrently mutated in cancer that are very likely to have importance to the development of those tumors, and yet we don't necessarily have drugs for those proteins. And so I think those are really great targets for drug development, and I know many groups are working on developing drugs for those alterations that we expect to be important, although we haven't been able to target yet. My hope is that genomic analysis will become part of the initial standard of care approach to treating patients with cancer. That is, in addition to the normal 
radiology studies and pathology studies, we do a genomic analysis and we understand what are the genomic dependencies in that tumor, what are the predictors of response to certain therapies, what are the predictors of resistance to other therapies, and we use that information along with all of the other clinical and pathological information to be able to make the most informed decision right up front.